Hey everybody, welcome back to Drinks in a Movie. Chris Hamker here with you. Today we'll be talking about... Oh wait, you know what? I see what I did there. Hang on. There you go. Hey everybody, welcome back to Drinks in a Movie. Chris Hamker here with you. Today we'll be talking about the new Steven Spielberg film, Ready Player One. But first, let's start with the drink. The drink I've chosen today is called the Flying Grasshopper because even in the online world of the Oasis, you can be a flying grasshopper. I'm kidding, of course. I chose the Flying Grasshopper because it's the most 80s drink I could find. This thing screams the 80s, and uh, that's kind of what this movie does. It references all kinds of pop culture things, mostly from the 80s, but it does it from the 70s all the way to today. So the drink is actually really simple. It is one to one to one, one part chocolate liqueur, one part vodka, one part creme de mint put into a shaker with ice, shake it up real good, and serve it in a martini glass. Uh, um, so let's uh, make this drink and talk about Ready Player One. So Ready Player One is directed by my all-time favorite director Steven Spielberg and is set in the not too distant future of 2045. I mean I guess it's kind of distant. Um, but it's set in the future and sort of a dystopian not so great future where you know the 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 class divide has gotten greater and greater and greater uh and uh the way people escape this not so great world is they immerse themselves in this online um online world called the oasis and they all pick their own avatars and they exist in this world make friends make relationships make money even and And the main character of Wade Watts, played by Ty Sheridan, but actually his name's, more accurately, his name's Percival. Percival, this is gonna taste just like mint chocolate chip ice cream, I bet. I bet you. All right, who am I kidding? I know exactly what it's gonna taste like because I drank a lot of these when I was first discovering alcohol. Way back, uh, I don't wanna talk about it, but let's try this drink uh, and keep talking about Ready Player One. Yep, spiky mint chocolate chip. Anyway, people immerse themselves in this game that has been created, this online world, and uh, the main character, Percival, uh, is this teenage kid that has a crappy home life and just likes to get away and make friends in this world. The creator of this world, James Halliday, played by uh, Mark Rylance, who's been you know a, a common Spielberg mainstay as a recent played the BFG and was in won the Academy Award for Bridge of Spies plays Holiday and Holiday passes away and creates this uh, contest where you have to find three three keys it almost was two and I was going to change the story altogether you have to find three keys uh, unlock the doors and then find this Easter egg and if you find this Easter egg you not only get control of the Oasis you get control of a half a billion dollars of Halliday's fortune and thus the premise of the movie so this movie reminded me of why I love movies so much it reminded me of Quentin Brody and Hooper going out to hunt their shark it reminded me of Dr. Jones getting his hands on that idol it reminded me of uh, Dr. Dr. Grant guiding us through a dinosaur park. And if you've noticed that I'm using uh, pop culture references to explain why I love this movie so much, then you kind of get to the point of the movie, essentially. Um, this movie, directed by Steven Spielberg, reminded you that movies can give you a nice escape, a nice uh, um, escape from just your normal everyday life which isn't bad, but it just, it's nice to have that every so often. Um, and Spielberg is the master at creating wonder and adventure and, and, and opening your eyes and making you feel like a kid again. And that's what's so wonderful about this movie. This movie made me feel like a kid again and just reminded me of my childhood. 
my childhood was spent watching movies, especially watching his movies. Um, movies were my vacation. My mom raised my sister and I by herself, and we didn't have a lot, but we had the movies almost every weekend. We didn't go on vacation. So almost every weekend we would go to the movies and immerse ourselves in these things and then have dinner together, the three of us, and talked about it. That's how we connected. That's how we bonded. And, uh, and, and that's what this movie is essentially saying this movie this movie's characters is Wade Watts who 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 spends his time in the oasis connects with people through pop culture connects with people through being this you know this avatar it connects with common interests um and and that's what's magical about this uh and i just loved every minute of it unashamed about loving every minute of this movie that just made me feel like a kid again this movie is amazing uh, action adventure uh, steeped in this pop culture world where we live in really today. Incredible set pieces and special effects that will truly blow your mind. And not once was I confused. All this is put into a movie that never confuses you, never, uh, um, you know, uh, there's so much going on on screen in these set pieces that I was never once uh, confused as to what was going on, where the characters were or what they were doing, and uh, the goal of, 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 the, of the direction. And that's what it's like watching a film uh, directed by a master at his profession. Steven Spielberg knows what he's doing, knows how to frame a scene, knows how to follow what, what is important, knows how to block a scene to where things are going on that, that just makes sense even in this world that is largely computer generated. I mean, seriously, if, if, if fun could be manifested on screen, this movie does it. Now, effects are a big part of this movie, and what what is so great about the effects in this movie is that when the characters are inhabiting their avatars and in, in interacting in this world of the Oasis, it's pretty much all computer generated, um, but they do look incredible, but they don't look aggressively real or photorealistic to where the, the uh, Uncanny Valley is sort of slapping in the face a little bit. They look video game enough to where the contrast of the real world really works. And that's that I think is, is brilliant. They didn't try to do too much with it. They did enough to make it look eye-poppingly fantastic, uh, but also not too much to where it started to just put you off a little bit of what you were looking at. So there's been talk about this movie relying too much on pop culture references and beating you over the head with things, and uh, to, to this I say, yeah, I mean, this movie is a little bit shallow in terms of its, its, its themes and what it's trying to say. It does have... Um, social commentary, but the social commentary is very surface level. They mention how 2049 or 2045 is not a great place to live, and they show you a little bit of that, and they show you a little bit of Wade's uh, home life, which isn't great, uh, but they don't elaborate on it too much. And they also have the statement of, well, maybe you should cultivate more human interaction relationships instead of all the relationships you have in the Oasis. And yeah, that, of course, that's fine, but they don't really go into the implications one way or the other of too much time in the, uh, in the Oasis as opposed to not enough time. And, um, I, and there's also been talk about how the, the, the shallowness are, are, you know, the characters overflow with the shallowness about how they only connect because they understand these pop culture references that the movie relies so much on, which... I think that's just a human behavior. It just in general, we 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 glom onto people that have common interests. And if you know a, a cool little thing about uh, a favorite movie of yours or a favorite uh, game or uh, or TV show, then then that's a common interest. I mean, we've all been five years old, and we go, "You like Transformers? I like Transformers. How about that time when Optimus Prime did this to Megatron and all that stuff?" And that's that that's human behavior at its core, and that's what we—that's what, that's what we do. That's why we love this stuff so much. At least that's what I, why I do. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of service level. It's very much Spielberg fairy tale storytelling um, because there's. 
there's not a huge amount of danger. There's a lot of stakes, but there's not a huge amount of danger. But it's such a fun, wonderful adventure that that Spielberg just knows exactly how to do. Um, the other problem I had with this movie, and it's a weird little thing, uh, it's just something I noticed, is that the ending was a little, and I mentioned this fairy tale thing that Spielberg does, was a little too much, like everybody kind of ends up in the same place, and 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 it's almost like this weird 1940s, so kid, you, you completed the, the test, what are you going to do with all your winnings? Uh, it's, it's just a strange kind of... Um, uh, it's a Wonderful Life, to use another reference thing, where it's just sort of glossy Spielbergian thing, and it was a little like, mm, that's kind of a little too much. But uh, too much kind of, you know, cotton candy uh, of, about it. And so that was a little weird. I, I thought the very, like, last 10 minutes were a little, oh, that's... Okay, that's, I mean, that's fine. Uh, so um, other than that, man, this movie is a blast. I think everybody should go out and see it. It's... it's all, it's uh, one of the most, maybe the most theater experience movie, the best theater experience movie I, I've seen this year. I mean, it is definitely, if you're going to see it, go see it in the theater because this thing eats up the screen like no other and the sound and everything like that. So highly recommend, loved it. Uh, my favorite Spielberg movie is Jaws, obviously, and uh, so uh, let me know what your favorite Spielberg movie is. And uh, if you like this, please like, share, subscribe down here at the bottom. Thank you so much for joining me. Cheers. Have a drink on me, everybody. Bye-bye.